And after doing the research and looking at some of the numbers that I've come across, I was actually surprised. I think perhaps you will. And this might also change your mind about where you focus your time and what channels you put resources into. As far as the aesthetics of UX goes, 53% of mobile site visitors leave a page that takes longer than three seconds, just three seconds, to load. 75% of people form their judgment on a website's credibility based solely on the aesthetics. That's from smallbizgenius.net. Now that just goes to show how important design is. As we know, credibility is an incredibly important purchasing decision factor. But here's where it gets really interesting. According to Forrester Research, better UX design could yield conversion rates of up to 400%. And if you're a small business user, Xperia says that 70% of small business websites do not have call to action buttons, which is a huge component of getting users to actually take action. It also goes on to say that every 5.6 minutes, people check their mobile phone. I would actually think it was lower than that. Now, I probably would have guessed something like two and a half minutes. But that also goes to show how important your UX is to stand out. When people are scrolling on their phone, getting them to stop is key. And to take action is absolutely key. And what does that come down to? That comes down to not wasting any space, unnecessary words. Give them exactly what they want. You have to be a ruthless editor in this era to stand out. And it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. If you look at any evolving industry over time, it's not so much that marketing changes, it's the consumer themselves and their expectations. If we were to look at the car industry, for example, now, what used to be acceptable 30 years ago were cars like the Acura that had seat warmers, even push to start in Mercedes was seen as next level and high tech. Now we're seeing the entry-level cars come with these features, backup cameras, and so the bar gets raised every single time. You see, autopilot is now no longer something afforded to just the wealthy. So in terms of production, marketing, we forget sometimes, is still, while very creative, an industry based on producing. And so it would only make sense that the sophistication level would go higher, and especially with attention spans going lower, that meeting those expectations in a quick, snappy amount of time is what is going to set apart you from your competitors. Always taking a scalpel to whatever your marketing strategy is, making sure that ruthless elimination and editing is part of your company culture or your marketing team's culture. So this one's for the corporate crowd. According to Adobe, 63% of users want to see more polished, curated content from corporations. That's absolutely incredible considering the massive amount of budgets that corporations tend to carry. But it would make sense why this is a problem that they struggle with, and that would come from the investors or the C-suite with goals being so quarter to quarter and less investment going for the long term. Now, in this day and age, post-pandemic I'm talking, it will be interesting to see which companies now give more leash to their marketing teams to explore more of an investment type of strategy. Here's a very helpful statistic. I know it was for me personally. According to Titan Media, 70% of people pay attention to bulleted lists. Again, going back to UX, not just for design and aesthetics of a website, but the format of how you craft your words. There's a technical aspect to it now. No longer can you just get away with being a wordsmith, having rich sensory descriptions, but you actually have to format it so that it gets read. Now, that sounds like common sense, but when you actually try to go and do it yourself, you will see how much your language changes, how your sentence formation changes, what words you decide to use, all of that factors into it. It is very detail intensive. Here's another insanely useful stat here. 85% of issues that are relating to UX can be defeated by performing a usability test on a group of just five users. That's all you need. So it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. That's, this is especially useful for startup founders. And to end this all off, I saved the best for last to end this all off, but 66 
85% of consumers pay attention to content below the fold. They prefer to scroll right through. If you recall from the tens, all the buzz was about keeping it above the fold, which is where there's no scrolling, where your best information was at the top. I can confirm that I have seen many large corporations and top startups adopting the strategy where they will break out their homepage. It'll be long and it will be broken out based on the persona of a particular personality type. So for instance, they'll have a statistic section. For the analytically inclined, they will have a statistic section. For those that need to see purpose, brand mission, there's a section built for that. For those that want an emotional appeal on why they should do business with a particular brand, they'll have a section for that as well. Using power words, look more beautiful, live your life with more purpose and passion, save time on the weekends that you could go out with your friends, make your life easier. They'll have all those types of words that appeal to the selfish desires of the consumer. So to recap and bring all of this together, what are the most important lessons out of this podcast here, out of this segment? The most important thing to take away is that when you are developing content, make sure that either you have a process that you're working on or that you put in place, perhaps maybe even a formula that your team or your partners can follow so that it's systematized and then you can make the adjustments based on the numbers and the consumers that are going to your website and their behavior. For example, you want to be resourceful with the content that you produce instead of doing something like a brain dump and then having to sort and organize the pieces. That's going to be very time intense. So up front, have that organization and that template in place and you will save time. This is a strategy that I'm using right now where let's say that I'm creating video content. I will make sure that it can be broken out simply without having to constantly go back, listen to sound bites, and then chop it up. Even hearing this podcast in audio form, you can bet that when this is turned into the written when this is turned to the written text in the video format, it will be easily transferable. Let me know your comments by emailing me directly at house at bestrevenuewriter.com. This was episode three on UX writing, UX design, and the UX industry in general. I thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Do not forget to subscribe or follow to this channel for all the latest in marketing. No nonsense, no fluff, straight to the point, actionable tips that I use myself. We'll see you next time. Ciao.